What's going on guys, World Watch Hours back again with another view for you guys now. Yes, back again because I've done a video on Kepa, Lampard, uh, Pulisic about 5-6 hours ago. So this is my second upload of the day. But this video here will be giving you all the transfer goss in the last 12 hours. Things are popping right now. We have updates, we have new news for you guys. So if you join my content, help me out by liking this video. As many likes as possible, helps out this channel. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit the notification, tune in daily. And yes, I'll be going back to the 4 p.m. UK, um, UK time streams, of course. But I really like this quality, like, you know, fresh trim as well. I need to get everything on point right now, you know what I mean? So help with this channel. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions, as always. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a big transfer window for Chelsea, of course. It ends in October now because of COVID. I'm looking forward to it. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going through new topics that have come out recently. Updates on players that we want to hear. And players that I think should be leaving to make way because I want to see this new Chelsea team being rebuilt for Frank Lampard to challenge for those top honours. So the first topic is Kai Havertz. We know he's most likely going to be a Chelsea player. We have further updates today that he has agreed personal terms, um, roughly around 9 million euros, taking it until June 2025, according to Angelo. Um, his surname, Mangiante, hopefully I pronounced it right. I had to look at the phone just to make sure I get it right. If I got it wrong, I apologise. Um, but right now, Chelsea and Bayern Leverkusen need to agree the fee. It could be around 70 to 80 million euros up front with add on fees if he does well on his performances. So, yes, we also had Leroy Sane come on an interview talking about you know German players come to Premier League. He did speak about um, Timo Werner and then he said Kai Havertz to Chelsea. So, I don't know if he's mixed in translation, but from what I've heard from German friends, they have said that Leroy Sane has kind of said it himself i'm not sure how we would know maybe he's in contact with both of these players and they discuss about what they're going to be doing with their lives of course career wise um but yeah he should be a chelsea player very soon 80 to 90 percent sure that he will be a chelsea player now we're going to move on to the main news something that we've never ever spoken about something that could be a bit exciting it's not a bid or anything but it's scouting that we've heard from Matt Law, the Telegraph around Chelsea news, very reliable. Go check out his articles, go support the man. He's got very good links with Chelsea, of course. Now, Jose Gimenez from Atletico Madrid, a very, very top player. Someone that we have never ever spoken about on this channel, as I just said. Like he's someone that any club in the top four would want this player. Now it could be around 70 million. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh no, Kepa's fee, here we go. But this is not panic buy, this is actual being looked at whether we should sign him. And he's a very special player. I'm not going to say he's the next John Terry or anything, but there's a few images where he dives into the ball like John Terry to block, of course. So he's someone that has that fight, that passion, and he can probably lead the line if he was to join Chelsea, of course. So what I want to say about his play is I've, I've got a bit of research. Aerial drills, very strong. Concentration, um, indirect set-piece threat and does not dive into tackles. So all these things is what we need at Chelsea, okay? We need someone that can understand set pieces. We've conceded so many from corners. We've conceded so many from free kicks. We need someone to come in and change that for us. Now, I'm not gonna say that we're gonna sign this player definitely, but this is a very good sign if we are to go for this player. Now, there's talks about Skirinia going available for around 60 to 70 million euros, because he was quoted a lot more than that a couple of months ago, but suddenly, Inter Milan need the money, they've been spending money as well. So there are players available to be buying this transfer window. I think COVID, I don't wish bad on anyone, I don't wish any deaths on anyone, but in terms of Chelsea, it's benefited because we're signing players. Like This is a buyer's market. Chelsea are allowed to go out there and spend the right money. You know, Hakim Ziyech, 33 million up front with about 5 million add-ons, which is fantastic. Um, and you've got Timo Werner. Leicester Maratis feed to Atletico Madrid which is even better and of course the connection between Atletico and Chelsea is very strong you know Torres you've got Costa you've got Morata you know the list goes on basically and I'm sure if Chelsea want something Chelsea can get it seems that clubs nowadays around you know Barcelona Atletico Madrid they're spending silly money on silly players which doesn't make sense for any of the parties but I'm not complaining they are not my clubs I'm looking at Chelsea Chelsea have to make the right decision in terms of spending money now. Now, so far, what we've seen is fantastic deals. This window could be one of the best windows that we've seen since 2014, where Fabregas, Costa, and Lewis came into Chelsea. Now, what does that mean for our goalkeeper, Kepa? As I said in my previous videos, I'm against death threats, I'm against all of that. But is he ready for Chelsea next season? I'm afraid no, he does need to go. 
and I've listed so many players that should be going. I, I'm going to take my personal attachment from these players away to actual Chelsea squad that we need to look after. Okay, so Kepa, Rudiger, Christensen, uh, Barkley, Michi, Pedro, uh, William. Did I say Barkley already? Hopefully I didn't say it twice, I probably did. But Barkley, um, who else we got? Giroud can stay, Pulisic definitely stay in, Hudson Royce stay in, Kante stay in, Jorginho, maybe someone that can go as well if, if the money's right. Um, Emerson's going of course, Alonso stays for that formation. But these players, okay, we need to let go of them. We need to sell them. I don't care how much for, we have money in the bank. Yeah, we've got money coming in for get Champions League, we just need a draw. We just need to think carefully and understand that if we are to sign defenders, these defenders need to go. Okay, Rudiger, you know, decent player. Christensen, decent on the ball. But overall, that leadership that we need from these defenders, it's not there. It's not fully kept us full about when he doesn't come out and command the ball. Sometimes the defenders are standing. You know, everyone's blaming Chavo. You know, there's not one person to blame only. It's the whole back line, which is the problem, okay? This is why Chelsea fans need to understand. Yes, you're against Kepa, I understand that. But make sure you call out all of them. All of them. None of them are good enough to be Chelsea next season. If we're talking about realistic ambitions to take Lampard back to the top for Chelsea, okay? If we're looking at Klopp doing it in six, seven years, Lampard wants to do it in three years, people. He's already done year one nearly. He just needs to get the Champions League and it's been a successful season, personally, for me, anyway. Um, but yeah, those are my players that I think should be going. You know, there's talks about Oblak, I don't think it's going to happen. Dean Henderson, I don't think it's going to happen. He's probably replaced the Gea. Onana could happen, but is he really a massive upgrade? Of course, anyone coming in will be better than Kepa, but is he someone that can take us to that level? In terms of shot stopping, fantastic. You know, the Mitchie shot in the Champions League where he just saved it, from like the, those powerful shots, he just saved it. Very good, I understand. But is he someone that we should be looking at for the long term? I'm not sure, I don't think so. Caballero is still here. Ben Foster could come. You know, we're talking about that um, Sakir guy, or Jakir guy from um, Turkey. I don't even know if the CA is K or is it J, because I, I remember some person in my school was thinking of CA, but we pronounce it J, J, like, that's Turks, isn't it? I don't know if it's right or wrong. You lot can confirm me how you pronounce the name. But they we're linked with different players every single time. Now, we're talking about Kai Havertz coming in. That means, yeah, Ross Barkley has to go. Like, someone has to go to allow us to get this depth in. Because otherwise, we're going to have too many players in each position, which we don't need. Now, I know Hakim Ziyech, I know Timo Werner, I know Kai Havertz can play in different positions. Which is why Mitch can go. Willing can go. Pedro can go. All these players can go. And I'm looking at Ben Rahma right now. In the last two games, he's let me down. I don't know if he's doing it because his value needs to go down. But Brentford had a chance to challenge for second place, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think second place and they bottled it. They were on eight wins in a row and they bottled it. Now, whilst I'm doing this video, they were either drawing or losing as well. They're not doing too, too well. And, yeah, I still predict them to play Fulham in the final. Uh, player finals, of course, yeah. That's my prediction anyway. Um, but I think Fulham will probably make it back. But regardless, forget all of that. Let's move back into the news. Ben Rahman to Chelsea, maybe. Squad player at best, of course, 100%. So we shall see what happens. And as I said, Jorginho, if he was to be sold, we need to make sure we get the right money. Whether it's 45, 50 million pounds. This money that we get from these players, or Emerson, 25 million euros. All of it adds up together, people. So I'm not worried about Chelsea spending money. I'm worried about whether Chelsea make the right money from the right players that we sell. Okay, because I don't want no panic by lastminute.com if we are not ready by the next season. I'm sure we'll be ready, but I just want I don't want any more of those panic buys that we saw from Kepa. Like there was an article from Liam from the ESPN, you know, when Kepa was first signed, he said, Yeah, it could be very good potential, but it's a panic buy. Like Courtois gave his word to say that he will stay at Chelsea. We wanted Allison and Allison left for Liverpool because we took too long. And that's one thing that I'm sure Chelsea board regret letting go. We should have bought Alisson and let Courtois go regardless, man. I mean, we kind of knew that he wanted to move to Madrid, so why are we going to try to keep him? I understand. But things happen, you get business wrong sometimes, that's, that's how you live and learn, basically. And now Chelsea are looking towards the future, and I hope we can really get there. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this content, my second video of the day. 
the amount of content I'm bringing out for you guys. Please help me out, like the video, subscribe if you're new here, hit the notification, and yeah, tune in my birthday, July 26th, after the Wolves game, where we go live on this channel, yeah? Well, watch out, guys. I'm out. Peace.